Are you interested in using Photoshop to be more creative in your image editing, but the concepts of layers and layer masks still has you all confused? Well, in today's video, I'm going to break down the very basics of how to use layers and layer masks so that you can start using them today. Let's get started. Hey there photographers, my name is Brenda Petrella and welcome to the Outdoor Photography School YouTube channel where we help you create better images and reconnect with nature. If this is your first time here, welcome and thank you for joining us. If you find these videos helpful, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Okay, so many of you have reached out and asked that I create a video on how to use Photoshop layers and layer masks. And this is a pretty confusing concept for people who are new to Photoshop. I know it took me a while to kind of get it, but then once you have that aha moment and the concept clicks, then you'll be off to the races and you'll be able to use them in all kinds of creative ways in your photo editing. So let's hop over to the computer and get started. Okay, here we are over on the desktop and we are using Adobe Photoshop 2020 today. This is the most recent version of Photoshop. Um, if you have an older version of Photoshop uh, from the Creative Cloud, don't worry, it will look a lot like what we're doing today and you'll be able to follow along. Before we dive in, I just wanna do a quick orientation of what we're looking at here and make sure that we're pretty much looking at the same thing. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on the window scroll down to workspace and you'll see there are these different options available and I am using the photography workspace. So if you click that, you should see a very similar display on your computer if you're following along with me during this tutorial. So here we have on the left-hand side here is what's called the toolbar. This is where we're gonna find all of the various editing tools that we can use to edit our image. On the top layer going across here are the options for each of those tools. So depending on the tool you click on, you're going to see this options menu change on the top there. Now if we come over here to the right hand side of the screen, we have a bunch of different panels. And the panel that we're going to be paying attention to today is the layers panel here. If you don't see it, you just might have to click on layers to see it. And as you can see, when you open a new document in Photoshop, before you do anything else, it already comes in with one layer. So now if we look inside of this layers panel, you'll see this eyeball uh, square that has a bunch of tiny little checker boxes inside, and then the label. The eyeball is basically uh, let you know whether you're able to see that layer and edit it or not. So this is the thumbnail of the layer, and currently it's empty and so is transparent. And the way that Photoshop indicates transparency is through this checker boxed pattern. And then this is the name of the layer, layer one. And we can always change the name just by double clicking on that and we can type whatever we want. We're just gonna leave it as layer one right now. I also wanna point out these little white lines that are in the corners of the thumbnail. This indicates that the layer is selected. Next, we're going to scroll down here to the bottom and what you see are seven different icons. And these are icons that all affect the layers in the layers panel. The first one is a way of linking layers. It's not active for me right now because we only have one layer. The next one is a functions option. And this is a way of making certain adjustments to your layer, which we're not gonna worry about today. The next one is creating a layer mask. So we will use this one today. The next one here is how is a way of adding uh, an adjustment layer. Um, again, we're not gonna worry about this one today. The next one is a way of grouping layers. If you have multiple layers and you wanna stick them into a group so that they're easier to man manage, you would click on that. This next one with the box with the plus in it is creating a new layer. And if you're working with an uh, earlier version of Photoshop, this is going to look more like a little sheet of paper that's folded over. And then in the last one here is just a trash can and that is how you would delete a layer. And last but not least, right here in the middle of the screen is what's called the document area or the workspace, and that is displaying whatever it is that you're currently working on. Okay, so we have one layer. Let's go ahead and fill it with a color so that we can see the layer. So to do that, we're going to come over here to edit, scroll down to fill, and it's asking you what do you wanna fill it with? We're gonna say, yep, we wanna fill it with a color. Let's choose the color. And uh, I wanna choose orange for this. 
hit OK and OK, and boom, now we have created an orange layer. In fact, we can come over here and relabel it orange. Now that this layer has content in it, the orange color, we can now make use of this eyeball and turn it on and off. So if we click off, we no longer see the orange color, meaning that basically it, it's hiding that layer in the workspace. So if we keep the eyeball on, that means we see it. Okay, so now we have one layer, and it makes sense that the layer thumbnail here is reflected in the middle space here. Now let's add a second layer. So come on down here to the Create New Layer box and click on it. And now you can see in our Layers panel, we have two layers. Let's go ahead and fill this layer so that we can see it. So again, with the white little bounding boxes clicked onto that layer thumbnail, we're gonna come up here to Edit, Fill, Color, and now let's make this layer blue. So now we have two layers. We're gonna label it blue. Now notice that in the layers panel, we see two layers, but in the workspace, we only see one layer, and it's the top layer. The blue layer is on top of the orange layer, and so we are seeing only the top layer in the center workspace. So the way I like to think about layers in Photoshop is to think about a layer cake. So basically, let's imagine a layer cake and say you're taking that cake and you look at it from the top down and all you would see is that top layer of icing. You wouldn't see any of the layers because you're just looking at it from the top down. That's essentially what you're seeing here in the middle of the screen is the top of layer. Now let's imagine if we were to slice that cake, take a piece out and look at it from the side. Now you can see all of the layers, and that's basically what the layers panel is over here. These are all of the different layers of that piece of cake, whereas in the middle here, all we're seeing is the top-down version of that. Unlike a cake, we can actually move these layers around here in the layers panel. So notice how I switch these layers around. I can make the blue one on top or the orange one on top, and whatever one is on top is what I see here in the middle. So what if we wanted to be able to see through one layer to the next in Photoshop. Well, the way we do that is by using layer masks. A layer mask is applied to a specific layer in order to indicate what part of that layer should be as is and not changed and what part of that layer should be transparent so that you can then see the layer below. It is basically a non-destructive way to remove part of a layer so that you can now see through it to the layer below. So there are two types of layer masks, a white layer mask and a black layer mask. When a white layer mask is applied to a layer, it basically leaves that layer as it is. There's no change to the layer. When a black layer mask is applied to a layer, it then makes that layer completely transparent. So by applying a black mask to a layer, you now can see through to the layer below. Okay, so let's see how this works. Let's add a white layer mask to the orange layer. So we come down here and we click on add layer mask and it automatically will make that mask white. And you can see it is linked to the orange layer. Now we already know that if it's a white mask, there's no effect on that layer. We can't see through it at all. All we see is the layer itself. If we want to now invert this and see what a black mask would look like, all you have to do is hit Control or Command I while this mask is selected and it turns it black. So you can see here over in the thumbnail area, this is now a black layer mask linked to the orange layer. And as we know with black layer masks, that makes that layer, whatever layer it's linked to, transparent. And that is why we now see the blue layer in the middle. So you might be wondering at this point, why would using layer masks in photography be helpful to an editing process? And it's a good question. And that is because you would never probably use a full-on white mask or a full-on black mask in your editing. You would just use part of the mask. And so the way you would use part of the mask is to paint that part of that mask away using the brush tool. So here's the brush tool. You can go up to the options panel above and make any sort of adjustments you would like to your brush tool, like having a soft edge or a hard edge or different types of shapes and sizes. We're just gonna, with this example, I'm gonna use a hard round brush. You can adjust the size of the brush here or in other ways as well. So we're just going to make this simple. 
So here we go. Here's our brush. Now, my white layer mask is selected as shown by the bounding boxes. And I have a white paintbrush selected as shown here by this white box being in front of the black box. This is my color picker and it's showing me that my paintbrush is white. Now watch what happens. Nothing. Why? Well, it's because I'm painting white on a white layer mask. So white on white is going to have no effect. In order to remove part of the white layer mask, I'm going to need to paint with a black brush because remember, black is what makes that, that layer mask transparent. So we need to apply the black color. And the simple way to do that is to just hit this little toggle button of these two arrows, which will switch you to the background color. If you wanna make sure that that background color is black, you just click on that box and just make sure that this little dot is brought all the way down to the black corner and hit okay. So now I have a black brush, which I can now paint onto the white layer mask. And what will happen is that it will make that part of the layer mask transparent. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm now using my black brush and I am painting with the black brush onto the layer mask. And you can see now those areas of the layer mask are transparent to the layer below. I can see both that the layer mask here on the thumbnail is showing the black dots of the paintbrush that I just drew. And those are the areas of that layer mask that I can now see through to the layer below. Now, if you ever want to bring back the white part of the layer so that that area that you've just opened up with the black paintbrush was now back to white, all you have to do is switch to the white paintbrush. We're going to be painting white back onto our white layer to get rid of the transparent areas. And so to do that, we just have to paint over with the white paintbrush and that removes that area that we had made transparent with the black paintbrush. Okay, so now let's make a black layer mask and see how that looks. Just as before, we would come down here and we click on create new layer mask and a white layer mask was automatically linked to the orange layer, which I had previously selected. If I want to make that layer mask a black layer mask, I just have to hit control or command I and now that is inverted from white to black. Again, the black layer mask is applied to the orange layer, making that orange layer completely transparent, which is why we see the blue layer in the middle of the screen. Now, if I want to get rid of some of that black layer mask, all I have to do is paint white onto it. If I paint black onto the black layer mask, there'll be no effect, it's already black. So let's come over here and select our brush tool and make sure that it's white and we can start painting onto this layer mask. So as you can see, we have white dots in the white little smiley face here over here on the black, applied on the black layer mask, making us able to now see again the orange layer. Whatever is white is what we will reveal in the layer that that layer mask is linked to. Now, if we want to get super fancy and see what it would look like if we inverted this mask, all we have to do is make sure that the mask is selected and do Control or Command I and invert that. And now we have the white layer mask with the black paint, which is looks a lot like the image we had first created. So let's delete this and just see what it looks like if we apply another layer. So let's go down here and create a new layer here we go, a new layer. Let's go over to Edit, Fill, Color. Let's make the layer green, hit OK. So we have a green and orange and blue layer. We see the green layer on top because it's the topmost layer. Let's label it green. Okay, again, if we were to switch these around, whichever one is on top is the one we're gonna see. Okay, so on the green layer, let's create a layer mask and it's white. Because it's white, we see the green. Let's paint onto this layer mask. We have to make sure we have the black paintbrush and we can just do a fun little squiggle and maybe a dot and a dot. Okay, now I would like to create a mask of the orange layer so that I can start to see some of the blue layer in this design. So if I click on the orange layer and I, and I create the layer mask, and again, I have my black paintbrush. Now, if I was to paint inside here, 
of this layer mask, I can start to make a little design inside and reveal what's underneath the orange layer to blue. If I wanted to make any changes to what I just did to the layer masks, I just have to make sure that the layer mask I want to change is selected. So let's say I want to get rid of these orange dots on the outside. I would have to come up and click on the green layer mask. I would have to make sure that my paintbrush was white so that I can remove the black paint. So I would come over here, toggle to the white box, and then I can come in here with my white paintbrush and remove that part of uh, the black paint that's been applied to the white layer mask. Obviously what we did today was just go down to the very basics of using layers and layer masks in Photoshop without actually looking at images. But I encourage you to just go through this very basic process of using color-filled layers to practice the concepts of layers and using layer masks, both white masks and black masks, and getting used to the paintbrush tool and how to change the colors in order to get more comfortable using them so that you can then use them in editing your images as well. So there you have it. I hoped that helped clear up layers and layer masks for you. If you're still confused, drop me a question below and I'll do my best to answer it. One question you might have is, well, why would you use layer masks in your photo editing process anyway? So layers and layer masks are a way of doing non-destructive editing to your image in Photoshop. If you wanna see examples of how I use Photoshop in my photo editing process, uh, let me know in the comments below and I will put together a video on that. So if this video was helpful to you, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tutorials from Outdoor Photography School, hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, please check out our growing archive of how-to articles over on the Outdoor Photography School website, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks!